Video doesn't blow up. And then it was not as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Got a dance, but it's really on some street shit. I'ma show you how to get it. It go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot up, right foot slide. And she lay on sand in the way we ride the Ah. What's good fam? So this is the Run Amok podcast. Was this the f fourth episode? Must be the fourth episode. We've got Mana driving the car right now. Zion. 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 Zane behind the camera. Thanks to 4TP Entertainment. They've been producing all our podcasts and whatnot. And if you want to check out, they do like events and DJs and stuff like that. So go check out their Instagram page. Go right, yeah. Sorry, I'm just telling the bro where to go so we can pick up our, what do we call this? Zest? Our guest, that's it. Go pick up our guest. Uh, he just moved from Sydney to the Gold Coast, so we'll uh, catch you then. True. Outside, big boy. I oh, should go back, G. Are you? Yeah, we're here. Yeah, coming out now. So, G. Well, he's just on the corner. Oh, we've got an indicator now, Jay. We've got an indicator, baby, indicator, on my car baby. now. Shout out to Toxic Relationships. <laughs> yeah, one on the corner. I don't... Oh, with the van, G. That's his car. The champ is here. I just smashed right here. <laughs> How's it going? We got Mr. Jaden Lang in the car seat right now on the Run Amok, the podcast. Yes, the, the Run Amok pod, podcast, the Run Amok, Run Amok <laughs> podcast. Oh. So, you just moved up from Sydney, my bro. Right, bro How long were you in Sydney, Sydney for? Fuck, I lived there my whole life. Born and raised in Campbelltown, uh, Southwest Sydney. And um, I then went overseas, played rugby for a couple years, and then I came back, stayed in Sydney for like two years. The, the plan was to go over to France and play rugby. Yeah. But then I uh, broke my leg. And then, yeah, I've just kind of been stuck in Sydney and I just thought, change it up, do something different. I've got heaps of family over here, so. Oosh, nice. Yeah, I moved over here and fuck now I'm a GC resident. <laughs> nice. Well, tell us about playing um, rugby overseas. Where were you playing? Like, I went for all the Tigers development programs in, um, in Sydney and then I tore my rotator cuff and my strength and like conditioning coach for uh, like uh, my local rugby team. He had moved to America, married an American woman, found a new wife, everything like that. And then he reached out to me and was like, bro, if you, when your shoulder's good, do you want to come to America, play three months of rugby? And um, and it's just like men's rugby, and play for my men's rugby team. And I was like, fucking oh, yeah, sweet. Yo. They flew me over, got me over there. I played three months of men's rugby. And then from that three months of men's rugby, I got picked up to play uh, college rugby. Then I got a rugby scholarship. I, I was supposed to be over there for three years playing college rugby. Then I got picked up for the Chilean national team. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I represented my mother's heritage. Uh, so my dad's someone with Eugene, my mom's Chilean, and I represented the Chilean national team. I lived in Chile for three months. I did Argentina, Canada, Brazil, um, Uruguay. I did all these South American countries. Broken ass Spanish, just fucking went over there and had a crack. And yeah, and then, um, yeah, then, I, then I went and played in the MLR for uh, uh, Glendale Raptors. What's the MLR? Major League Rugby, which yeah, is the yeah. pro league in America. Yeah. So straight after I played um, for the Chilean national team, then I went and played for the uh, the pro team in America. Yo. Yeah, and then, and then I came back and then the plan was to go to France with my manager and then broke my leg and yeah, now, wow. now I'm doing strong man. Hey, so, yeah. what, was, what was that like, like breaking your leg? Like, did you hit that, did you hit depression and all that kind of stuff or how, were you still good? Nah, bro. I've, I've always been a pretty positive guy. Eh? And yeah. Like, um, I, it was for me. It was like, all right, we'll focus on what I can do instead of what I can't do. Yo. So I had a broken leg, and I I, I bought a scooter yeah, off yeah. Um, uh, Facebook Marketplace because, bro, those um like disabled scooters. Yeah, yeah. They're like, they can go up to like eight hundred bucks. <laughs> and I was like, nah, nah, nah. I ended up getting one for a hundred bucks of some random dude in my area, like a mobility scooter. Yeah, like yeah. when you put your knee on it and you can ride around like a scooter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. one of those, and that was it, bro. It's gym every day, just smashing the gym every day, and just fucking cruising around on that scooter, bro. Fuck. Everyone the motivation's up, real. Up. Yeah, and I just put the scooter in the back of the truck and cruise around like that. It was the best thing ever, right? Holy yeah. damn. Yeah. No, and then, so what was after that? After you, like you started, oh, so you went back to Sydney? After you broke your leg? Yep, after I, oh, I was, yeah, I was living in Sydney. Living in Sydney, yeah. And then, um, yeah, my, once my leg came good, I just started focusing on the gym and taking the gym real serious. And then it was crazy because while my leg was broken, um, I got sponsored by EHP Labs and, and then I became a sponsored athlete <laughs> while my leg was broken, bro. <laughs> so it was mad because I'd been uploading all this gym content and just making gym video and stuff like that. And then while my leg was broken, I was just sitting at home and, I, and then I got an a, a Instagram message and there was EHP Labs and I was like, what the heck? It's got like 130,000 followers and they're reaching out to me, what the heck? Yo, yo. I did a little interview with them. I just told them my story, how I got into training and fitness and everything like that. 
Mexican brands. That was it. Like, they, they were like, yeah, we want to get you on board. We want to sponsor you as a sponsored athlete. Wow, and I hell. was like, man, this is crazy. I'm a sponsored athlete. And like, that's, it just goes to show away when like when one door closes, another one opens. Bro, legit. And, that's, and that's, it was crazy. That's right, that, like, right there. Literally straight after one of the other. It was like, I broke my leg and I had, I'd always loved the gym and I was really into the gym, but I broke my leg. I got sponsored by EHP Labs and I was like, Right, so this gym thing is might, might take me somewhere. It might be yeah, like something yeah. that actually like to take me to somewhere else. So then I said, "Stuff it! I'm gonna start competing in strongman." And then yeah, so now I, I like to consider myself as a, a strongman competitor. Hey. Oil, but uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's that's what the go is right now. And then, so what's what's for you next when it comes to strongman? So I've got a competition in two weeks for meat stock, which is an Australian qualifier. Yeah. So I've qualified for New South Wales strongest man. So I'll be competing in New South Wales Strongest Man at the end of this year. Yeah. Um, this competition is an Australian, uh, Australia's Strongest Man qualifier. So I have to do well in this in order to qualify for Australia's Strongest Man. And then I'm also uh, in four weeks. I've got GC Strongest Man to qualify for Queensland Strongest Man. So, wow, right. yeah, so I'm, I'm right in the mix for my <laughs> first time, like my first year in the sport. Holy and I'm Right in the mix, bro. Trying to um, see how far I can get in this sport, eh? Yeah. See and when's that GC? When's that GC one it's coming in up? Four weeks, uh, 21st of May. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just that Coco's gym. Yeah. And I'll compete for GC Strongest Man. And it'll be bad, you know. I've just moved to GC. And I imagine I get a little medal saying, you know, GC Strongest <laughs> Man. Or something like that. He's only been here for a month oh, and a half. Yeah, I'll just come here oh. and take the titles, oh. why'd, why'd you move to GC from Sydney? Uh, I, so, like, um, obviously, I have a lot of family over here, but. Bro, in Campbelltown, where I grew up, a lot of the boys and a lot of my like my mates and stuff like that, like some of the boys, like one of my boys, he owns a gym, but it's like real fitness based, like functional kind of thing, and, and it, that's all well and good. Yeah. But for me personally, like I want to be surrounded by people doing the, the exact same thing as me. I want to be surrounded by people making videos. Yo. I want to be surrounded by people um, trying to be like proper athletes, like strong man, bodybuilding, gym, and everything like that. So even at the gyms that I would train at in my area in Southwest Sydney or stuff like that. I was always just the the idiot that was carrying on. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Everyone was always looking at me like, this guy's an idiot. Like, oh, this guy's too loud and carrying yeah, on. Whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just want to be surrounded. By I know how that guys. feels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just want to be surrounded by other cunts that are like-minded and and um, are real passionate about fitness. Hey, eh? like, yeah. Like, I'd always be the guy that's up at five a.m. and be like, right, anyone keen to run stairs? Anyone keen to go run the sand dunes? And no one wanted to. Buy yeah, this guy. Like, I went yeah. to Sydney for my missus' birthday. And I'm only there for three days, and I was like, fuck, should we hang out? And he's like, yo, should we have a gym sesh? No, I don't want to do that while I'm in Sydney. Uh, Holy to, Rick. Even last night, even the bro we were with um, at the pub last night, because Jaden came out last night just to say chair, and then um, he was like, yo, off to the gym after the pub. And then the bro was like, hey, and then even he got home, and he was like, he's telling everyone, he's like, you know where the bro was off to after the pub? <laughs> But yeah, hard. The motivation is real with you, eh? Have you always been like that, G? Like even as a kid, like we always like. So uh, when I was young, uh, yeah, I would say yeah, hundred percent, bro. Uh, yeah. I, I was in high school, uh, maybe like. Well, I, I made like um, Harold Matthews, which is under 16s uh, West Tigers development, right? Yeah. So um, I'd made Harold Matthews, and we had just started the gym, and bro, I was rubbish. Like I'd never been in the gym before. My first time in the gym was with my footy team. And um, I was like, man, I'm so weak compared to these other boys. These other boys are pumping Yo, weights harder. Yeah. Like they've got some foundation of, of gym under their belt. And for me, I was just rubbish. So I was like, I need to start going to gym. So I asked my dad for a gym membership for my 17th birthday. Oh, yeah. And he, he got me a gym membership, which Yo. was absolutely amazing. And then I used to go to the gym before I went to school. So I'd wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Before school, before everyone's even awake, lad, and I'd go to the gym, I'd walk down to the gym, which was like a proper mission too. <laughs> yeah. So I'd walk down to the gym, I'd train, get, I'd have to pack all my school stuff and uh, um, all of my, my books, pens, pencil cases, everything like that, school uniform, train, get ready for school, then catch the train to school, and, and I'd be at school with a gym session under my belt, and everyone's just like rocking up to school like, oh, I just woke up, I just woke up. <laughs> and I just think, oh, this, this is what's going to separate me. This is what's going to allow for me real. to really... Um, like really excel in whatever that I want to do, you know what I mean? And and um, I feel like it's a reflection. Like like those 
those little one percenters, those little times where I put in the hard work is a reflection of my success, you know. I was able to play international rugby. I was able to play professional rugby in America. I was able to to, to get a scholarship and experience college lifestyle in America bro. because I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning, bro. Just because I was doing those little one percenters, I then got to travel the world, bro. In one, yeah, and yeah. And while I was playing rugby, at one, at one year, I'd done seven different countries. And for free. That's a wicked way to look at it too. Oh, That's man. mean as. It was a huge blessing for me, bro. All right, we might we might stop talking here because we're nearly at um, the pub. Going to have a feed and stuff. We'll talk a bit more at, at um, lunch. But um, I want to get into the college. Yeah, oh. the college stuff. We'll get into that uh, next. That sounds holy, good to us. Holy. We on? Let's go. <laughs> a calf size up. Ready? <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Just to really. <laughs> <laughs> Why you to do a cut? My my my, rubbish, my, my right calf is way way smaller than my left. What a rubbish, bro. I didn't train my calves. Huh? My thighs are the same size as my calves, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, I need to work on that. No, I definitely need to work on that. What's is this a good squat? Wait, wait. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's form, mate. Hey, that's form, brother. Even with the <laughs> Crocs, man, it's good, man. These are. Oh, I should have put them in sports mode. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Probably Zane taught me to squat, I reckon. <laughs> you don't drink, eh? Nah. What's um what's the go with that? <laughs> it sounded bad the way I said that, eh? What's <laughs> what's the go with that bro? That's Is fine. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> what are you drink, man? Yeah. <laughs> so how come you don't drink? Have you never been a drinker? I've always been a life of the party, like, oh, not, not yeah, yeah, party yeah. but I've always been high on life and real happy and yeah. I don't need alcohol to come out of my shell or yeah. or like to loosen up. I'm just a dickhead 24 7, bro. What do you like on the first when you have had a drink? I just get tired, bro. I, just <laughs> I, feel like, I start drinking and I'm like, oh, I want to go to sleep. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, I would say it has to be the right environment for me as well. Like, um, I love a good like drink up with the boys, like around the table. We're all having a laugh, maybe playing cards, kicking back like that. Yeah, like the lazy garage drink bro, up and stuff. That's yeah, the yeah. best way to drink, you know, jamming, listening to music. Yeah. That's the best way. But, and like if I do drink, that's how I'd want to drink. But in terms of going out and spending like hundreds of dollars at the bar, yeah. buying these twenty dollar drinks, and bro, it's, it doesn't benefit my my finances, doesn't benefit me physically, doesn't benefit me mentally. There's just no benefit hard drinking for shit. Me. <laughs> it's hey, drinking like will never right benefit you. <laughs> drinks, ten drinks, ten drinks right now. Little steak sounds good. I'll be on the chicken hard out. Here, go. Yeah, Order what you want. Hey, what's the what's the best feed you've had in the world? Because you've travelled quite a bit, eh? Hey? What's the best feed you've had and where? Uh, if I had to say somewhere, like in terms of food and like where you get the best food, value for money, everything like that, Turkey, one hundred percent. Turkey. Bro, right. um, have you ever got like a meat platter? Like, like it's a plant and it's got all different types of meats and and everything like that, and it's got sauces and vegetables and chips yeah 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 so bro, that and each one of those costs like ten dollars so you buy a meat platter ten dollars actually turkish food is unmatched bro pide they got so much different stuff bro it's, it's actually ridiculous shout it's out to the turkish oh bro the meat and everything it's absolutely amazing it's you mean asian cheap. countries as well i've done thailand and china yeah and what's china, the food still china was amazing but china's nowhere near as cheap as um, yeah like, yeah what you get for your money like it's unmatched in Turkey. Yo. Turkey's crazy. Um, China's obviously mad in terms of like the noodles and all the different stuff. Um, you know, the touristy stuff as well. You can eat scorpions and like caterpillars and all that other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did all that, but the food was, the food's good in China, but if I if I had to choose one, guys, Turkey's the way to go. Turkey's yeah. the best place. There you go, Both Turkey. Like Holy hecka. Yeah, bro, fucking. Every time people ask you when you want to go out for a feed and you're trying to eat clean, lad, it's the hardest thing. But you just got to try and make uh, healthy decisions, I guess, eh? So I just got a little little rum steak, you know? A little bit of edge on the side, not too bad. But uh, I did. <laughs> that chicken palmy was looking at me. <laughs> when I saw it on the menu, I was like, hey, that looks delicious. <laughs> Holy Rick. Bro, I said two is new. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to hear about uh, this college stuff. Yeah. So where'd you go to college in the states? So um, 
when I got uh, offered, the, like I got offered from a few different universities in America. Yeah. I got uh, Minnesota University, which is like a pretty big university. I got uh, Davenport University, which is uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Lindenwood University, which is in St. Louis, Missouri. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty yeah. sure. St. Louis, Missouri, yeah. So I pretty much like, but have you seen Blindside? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't it, honest. It felt a bit like that. It wasn't like that, obviously. <laughs> but I felt a little bit like that. Up one family. <laughs> no, not that part. <laughs> but the part where, so like, all the colleges are like trying to like, like give you a deal, and they're trying to get you to come oh, to there. Actually, yeah, 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 bro. So yeah. that was the mad thing. So I actually went to each university and done like a little tour, and they they showed me around. I met the boys, and they like you know try and suit me up to get me on board yeah. you know what I mean everything like that and um Lindenwood I, I, I'm not gonna lie I fucking regret not going to Lindenwood eh? why uh, they so were where'd you go I went to Davenport University yeah. so that was an amazing so college time, how come you chose that one so I chose it and the only reason I did chose it was because Davenport was offering me a better deal in terms of finances yeah so I was like man that that's more money that I have to spend and stuff like that so I got like a pretty much a full ride scholarship the only thing i had to pay for was my accommodation yeah but food sorted um uh, tuition sorted travels sorted everything like that sorted um so i pretty much got a free education but uh, i just had to pay for my accommodation and the accommodation worked out to be it was like around seven thousand uh us dollars no seven thousand australian dollars sorry aud a semester and there's two semesters in a year yeah so it's fourteen thousand dollars a year for accommodation and that's all i had to pay True. easy there right so oh. so i was like oh, that's a bad one yeah now lindenwood university they were offering something similar but it was a little bit less like i had to pay a little bit more yeah. in in terms of money and everything like that so um and the other thing that kind of turned me off about lindenwood was I'd played men's rugby with a, a lot of those boys. Yeah. And bros, they're party animals, bro. Like, like hard out party animals. They love the party life. They love, you know, getting amongst the drinks, the girls and everything like that. And I just thought, bro, if I'm gonna go to university, I wanna, I wanna utilize, I wanna take the advantage of this opportunity. So I definitely do not wanna be trying to do that party stuff. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I think I think Davenport was the best choice for me. Yeah. So I did make that choice. However, Davenport was in one of the hardest, uh, hardest, most competitive conferences in America. So we had the top three. Sorry, sorry, I'm spitting this. Uh, we had the top three, <laughs> top three rugby, uh, rugby uh, colleges in America, just in our conference. So like um, always that uh, the two teams that would win the entire um, like USA Nationals or D1A uh, rugby competition was always either Lindenwood or Life University. And yeah. we had to burst both of those teams in order to qualify for Nationals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bro, we always lost to Lindenwood and we wow. always lost to Life. So I never even got to be on the national stage or compete against the best colleges in yeah. America because we never made it out of our conference. So. I do kind of regret going to Davenport, but it's still an amazing experience. I can't, can't complain, bro. It was it's awesome. Crazy, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Well, our food's hit. Let's have a feed. Let's go. Chat later. Appreciate Let's it. Let's go. All right, so we're back in the car. Uh, we have to go get another battery pack. <laughs> that can we finish that last bit at the pub. But we had a bit of a feed and whatnot. Now we're dropping the bro back off. But um, I want to ask you, since you've done a bit of traveling here and there and whatnot around the world, has there ever been like a girl that you met somewhere and like the one that got away? <laughs> no. Is there one of those stories? Or? No, no, no. no Haven't no. fallen in love overseas? No, not no. really. No, no, no. Nothing like that. What about falling in love at all? No, no, no. No, you haven't loved anyone? No, I always like to think that I need to um, be the best version of myself so that way I can expose myself to a higher caliber of women. You know, the, the more uh, financially stable you become, the more physically attractive you become, the more uh, that one. successful you come in yeah. your career or within your space, then um, you will attract a higher caliber of women. I thought the higher cal caliber of women for me was like just like more expensive bars and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to buy a girl. So have you had a Mrs. G? Uh, I've had two. Two, yeah. Yeah, I've had two in my entire life. 
What's their names and what's their full names <laughs> and like? <laughs> <laughs> so they could dislike you. Was that recently or? Nah, nah. Uh, before nah. I went to America, so my last girlfriend, I, we broke up just before I went to America, so I was 19 or 20. Yeah, yeah 19 now. or 20. So. Uh, and how old are you now? I'm 27. Are you 94? You 95. Oh, no, 95. Are you yep. 90, uh, 28 this year? Yep. What about like marriage and kids and stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, I that, love the does idea. That get you yeah, going? yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm real passionate about family and about and about like you know one day finding that one partner that I can travel with, train yeah, yeah. with, um, you know, look after and do all the little things. Yeah, I, I definitely want a partner one day. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I gotta be the best version of myself that way I can attract the right girl. And uh, yeah, it's probably not anytime soon. I don't know. Who knows, what if, if it happens, it yeah, happens that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well. I'm in GC now, so if any yeah, GC yeah. hotties want to hit me up, GC hotties, let me know. Oh, crack! Before we finish it up, what's what's one piece of advice you can give to young fellas that like want to do what you're kind of doing? Bro, I'll even go off what we were speaking about earlier, bro. Yeah. Earlier, um, no matter what you do, people are gonna talk crap. So yeah, yeah. if if I can say anything to anyone, I always get messages on. How did you start the gym? How did you start? Or what? Or how do you? How are you motivated? How are this? Right, don't worry about it. Go and have a crack. Okay, like, whatever you, whatever you want to do in life, go and have a crack. Like, yeah. Go and have a dig. I, I started making videos from um, like uh, riding scooters when I was a little kid, and we made videos then. And then uh, like no one ever watched my videos. Yeah. Uh, and then I started going to the gym, and no one ever watched my gym videos. And then um, yeah, I guess once TikTok became a platform, and I really um, started like gaining some traction on TikTok, all of a sudden everyone was watching my videos, but I'd already developed the skills in learning how to edit, yeah, learning yeah. how to, how, what angles and everything like that. So no matter what you want to do, it will always contribute to something no matter what you do in life. So like um, if you want to be a, a basketball player or whatever, yeah. well then you got to get your hops up. So do the little accessories in order to get your hops up or, or your fitness or anything like that. But have a crack, do something. Something is always better than nothing. Yeah. What, are, what about for people that like don't have the motivation to even give it a go? Like what's the first step of just giving it a go? Uh, How do you push uh, someone to do that? Ah, uh, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make the horse a drink, bro. Can't so, make a horse a drink? You can't make the horse drink, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you can't make the horse drink, lad. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if you don't, if you don't want to do it, then you're not going to do it. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like if you want it bad enough, you'll have a crack, yeah. lad. And, and it's all about starting small steps, giving yourself, um, uh, like short short term goals as well as long term goals like um me for strong man it was just you know getting in there getting learning the movements and then gradually getting better picking up on technique watching videos doing all the little one percent right so that it can contribute to the big the big thing in the end if you want it then you'll do it if you don't want it then you're never going to do it like Jaden lang ladies and gentlemen <laughs> man of many words many talents That's right. plug um plug all your socials uh Jaden tyson lang on tiktok and instagram uh, the YouTube is Onways, so uh, if you want to follow my YouTube now, and then that way you uh, see all my content once it's uploaded, uh, you can jump on there. Yeah, YouTube coming soon, bruh. Let's go. That's us, fam. Shop for watching. Sure. Yeah, the glove, no sequence. Buckles on the jacket, it's elite shit. Nike crossbody, got a piece in it. Got to dance, but it's really on some street shit. I'ma show you how to get it. It go right foot up, left foot.